OK, welcome back. So here's the experimental setup once again so you can familiarise yourself with it. The calorimeter is a vacuum sealed dewer flask with a rubber lid, an electronic stirring mechanism which you can see turning, and a highly accurate thermometer. So, for the calibration reaction, accurately weigh out 11.30 grams of powdered sodium nitrite. Transfer the powder to a 100 milliliter volumetric flask by rinsing it from the weighing boat with a wash bottle. Now add distilled water to just short of the mark. Make the solution accurately up to the mark, adding distilled water via dropping pipette until the base of the meniscus is perfectly aligned with the mark. Stop at the volumetric flask and then mix the contents thoroughly by repeated inversion. Next, transfer 600 millilitres of distilled water to the calorimeter. And then add approximately 5 grams of sulfamic acid. Next, Place the lid on the calorimeter, being careful not to damage the thermometer, and make sure the lid is tightly fitted. Then, attach the stirrer cable and tighten with an Allen key. Switch on the stirrer and allow 10 minutes for the sulfamic acid to dissolve completely and for an equilibrium rate of temperature rise to be established. We're going to jump 10 minutes forward in time so you don't need to wait. The initial temperature of the reactor at time zero is 19.18 degrees centigrade. You should have this written down. We start the chronometer and you now need to take temperature readings at one minute intervals for five minutes in order to define the slope of the pre-reaction period. I will rejoin you again shortly before five minutes have elapsed.
On 5 minutes, pipette 10 ml of the sodium nitrite solution into the calorimeter through the open glass tube in the lid. The temperature will rise rapidly. By 6 minutes, the reaction should be complete. Now, continue taking readings at 1 minute intervals from 6 minutes to 10 minutes to establish the slope of the post-reaction period. I will rejoin you after 10 minutes has elapsed.
OK, you should now have your 10 readings. All that remains to be done now is to empty, clean and dry the calorimeter ready for the next run. So, for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, weigh out roughly 6 grams of manganese dioxide catalyst. Place this to one side. Now transfer 600 milliliters of distilled water to the calorimeter. Once again, place the lid on the calorimeter, being careful not to damage the thermometer, making sure the lid is tightly fitting. Then, attach the stirrer cable and tighten once again with an Allen key. Switch on the stirrer, then pipette 10 millilitres of the hydrogen peroxide solution into the calorimeter. Again, allow 10 minutes for thermal equilibration. We are going to skip this part. The initial temperature of the calorimeter at time zero is 19.43 degrees centigrade. You should have this written down. We start the chronometer and take temperature readings again at one minute intervals for five minutes to define the slope of the pre-reaction period. So I'm going to leave you now to get on with that and I'll be back in five minutes.
On five minutes, we add the manganese dioxide through the open glass tube in the lid to catalyze the decomposition. The temperature rises rapidly once again. By six minutes, the reaction should be complete. Now, continue taking readings at one minute intervals from six minutes to ten minutes to establish the slope of the post-reaction period. I'll see you again after ten minutes have elapsed.
OK, you should now have taken your tenth and final reading. Now we empty, clean and dry the calorimeter once again and the experiment is finished. Now consult the experimental sheet which should guide you step by step through the calculations you need to perform to calculate values for the enthalpy of decomposition of liquid hydrogen peroxide and the DHOOH bond dissociation energy of hydrogen peroxide. You will be assessed on the two values calculated. Good luck.